Hi, YouTubers. So recently, um, I was having a conversation with somebody on in the comments section about feeding. So I thought tonight I would show you guys how I feed my very aggressive discus beef heart. So here we are. Let's see if you can see this. I'm gonna put this where you can see it good. Okay, so I have beef heart frozen cube here. And uh, as you can see, the two blue males who hate each other and are always chasing each other around. Everybody's going to get in there. Everybody's going to get some. This guy over here is a lower guy. So sometimes I'll just bring it in front of him like this and make sure he gets some. But you'll also notice that as the discus are feeding off of this, like little bits are flying all over the place. So the point I'm trying to make is that everybody gets some. See, I'm just going to let it go now. They'll chase that around. But now, I just watched every single fish get some food. And you'll you'll see, even still, like if I pan over here. Actually, he's going to come into the view any second now. Here he is. This guy over here. He's getting little bits all around over here. He'll pick them up off the substrate. But it looks like it's snowing in there. That's all little pieces of beef heart. Um... So even if you have, you know, really aggressive discus at the top of your pecking order, it doesn't matter. Everybody, you know, no one's going to starve in the discus tank. No, you know, even the, even the guys who are more submissive, they all get their little bits and pieces. So there's really no, you know, mystery to it or anything. You just, that, but I wanted to show you an example. If you have these tongs, let me put these in front of the screen here. These little things you can buy on Amazon. You can also get them at most um, shops, fish stores, aquarium shops, whatever. Um, you know, they're just like little tongs, tweezers. And uh, they're really convenient because you can really, you know, take the cube and put it in there and make sure every single fish gets some. But you know, it's not like you have to chase them around and put it in front of them too much. I mean, I would only suggest doing that is if you had a fish that really was scared and shy and wasn't getting any food. Um, but if you look at the tank here and see all of these little bits flying around, everything that's flying around eventually settles to the ground. And that's why these fish, you'll see them, like here's one right here at the bottom. They go around and they sift through the substrate. You can see the quarry cats are over here doing it. And everybody gets little pieces of meat. Nobody goes hungry. Even the guys that are kind of picked on, like this guy in the back, the blue one, the Turk, who's kind of like hiding. He, he knows he's got to kind of hide behind um, the plant because the big snakeskin guy over here will pick on him. He's the, he's the big bully right there, the snakeskin. Of, for the males anyway. And then you got the females. This is the, the top female right here who's going to go down there and get clean up the floor, get all the little bits of meat. Oh, actually, no, I'm sorry. That's Jojo. Where's, where is she? Here's the big one. That was Jojo. Here she goes. She's cleaning up, getting some more bits of beef heart. And then you've got the snake skin guy. He's going to go at the top, see what he can find. So these are my discus, busy at dinner time. Nobody's just floating around doing nothing. Everybody's off searching for little bits of food, even the quarry cats. They're no dummies. They know when uh, good food comes in, they get right to work. They get right to business, these little guys. They're so cute. Look at that guy. You know, you might have heard, too, that if you have quarry cats, you should always have nice, fine sand for substrate because if you don't, if you have gravel like this, it destroys their barbells. Well, I don't know. I've had uh, quarry cats for many, many years, and I've never seen that happen. These guys, you can see them right now. They're sifting through this gravel. 
I mean, this isn't a really sharp gravel. I've seen some gravel that I probably wouldn't use, but I mean, if you have like this round, these big rounded pieces of gravel, it doesn't, it doesn't do them any harm. They sift, they, I've seen them like digging their whole head into this gravel and they all have perfectly fine barbells. None of them have been damaged. So I don't know if that's like an old myth or what, but I don't seem to have a problem with that. So here are my discus, my big pigeon bloods. That one's got a uh, fin that's torn, ripped in half. That happens, you may see that on occasion. Don't ever worry about that. They do rip and tear their fins on occasion. Um, they grow back, never a problem. Usually it's just like a little tear here or there, but that one actually, she's got a pretty good split on one of her fins there. That doesn't really bother her, as you can tell. Look at look at these two fighting. One female is like, no, I'm not moving for you. The other one's trying to push her over, and you can see which one was higher up. The one that had to pull away, she was the submissive one. The other one that stood her ground, this one here, she's the more dominant one. So they push each other around, they do all this kind of stuff. It's just natural. So that's it. So everybody got some beef heart. This guy in the back's gonna hide out. He's got kind of a method that he does. He'll hide out while everybody's searching. And then when all the other fish kind of calm down and they'll go and rest somewhere, then he goes on the prowl and he gets anything that's left over. And that's probably why he is a little bit smaller than the other ones because he's not you know, as an aggressive feeder, um, but he's perfectly healthy and uh, he gets his share. You're always going to have discus that are different sizes like that. You know, the really, the top dogs are usually the biggest fish. This one right here is the top fish and she's the biggest fish in my tank. And um, she never goes without food. She makes sure she gets her share and she will fight for it. And these quarry cats are not thin either. If you look at them, they're kind of chubby. So everybody's well fed. But I just wanted to show you that, that that's how I feed my beef heart. You know, and I don't even do it that way all the time. I just wanted to show you that that's how you could do it with the tongs if you wanted to. A lot of times I just throw that cube in and they all fight for it and everybody gets some and that's enough. I mean, I feed my, my fish several times a day, so I don't really worry about anybody not getting enough. And I think that would apply for pretty much everybody else, too. If you're feeding three, four times a day, chances are very good that everybody's getting enough to eat. So that's it, fish people. Another night feeding the discus. Hope your fish are doing well. My guys are doing good. There they are. We'll get kind of a wide shot. Sorry for any glare. But... There they are. There goes the quarry cat going up to the top. Sometimes I do that. Sometimes they like to get a little extra air. It's funny, too, because I've read that they do it when the water quality is not good. My water quality is perfect. They still do it. Um, I think they do it as part of, like, a exercise. Or it seems to me like when they're playful and active, when they're feeding, they get really excited and they like to do that. They go up and down from the top. Um... Uh, so I haven't had any issues with water quality, and they all look perfectly healthy. So, yep, I don't worry about that. I have read, though, in, in other books that say, you know, if your quarry cats are going up and down in the water column, it could mean that, you know, they're in distress. Mm, I'm not buying that. Sorry. <laughs> only only from my own experience, you know, and you you got to go with what what your own fish are telling you. You know, my quarry cats look fine. I mean, you couldn't find anything on these guys... Let's see, we'll go zoom in on one. Perfectly healthy albinos. Nothing wrong. One of them is a female. Two of them are males. Don't ask me how to tell which is which because I do not know. If anybody else wants to uh, chime in on that, that'd be great. You can tell me how to do it. They all look exactly the same to me. But I do know that one's a female because I've seen her with her egg sac under her belly. And I've seen her lay eggs. They're so cute. Look at this guy. <laughs> he just went to chase a discus. 
They're funny. Those are my little quarries. And my big discus. Doing good. There's the Turk coming out. You know, another submissive thing that Discus will do is you see how he's clamping his fins? He's doing that because he's the low man on the, and this guy's coming to push him. This guy will spread his fins really big. He'll puff himself up. Look, he's doing it right now. He makes himself look as big as he can. And that's like a dominant, aggressive posture. He's posturing. The submissive guy will posture in his way by saying, okay, I'm, I'm beneath you. He will relent and he'll submit. So he will clamp his fins down. And then when he's by himself or the other guy isn't around, he'll go back to normal. So that's a, so just a little piece of information you might not have known, or maybe you did. Kind of interesting. It's really fun to watch the behavior and the dynamics of the relationships. And they do have real relationships between each other. And that's why I personally really enjoy community tanks where you can see personalities and diversity and interactions between the different fish and the different species. And I wish I could show you my Placo. Where is he? He's down there somewhere hiding. I am seriously thinking about getting another Placo just to see if I can kind of flush this other guy out so we can see him more because he just hides all the time. So that's it guys. Sorry for the shakiness. I'm going to put the tripod, tripod back down here. That's it. So that's how I feed my discus. Somebody asked and I wanted to show him how I did it. So that's about it. And um, I'll probably be sh doing a video soon with the cube and show you what's going on with that. I now have another tank, surprise, surprise, um, where I'm keeping just all my male fish. Hey, look at, look at that discus. Do you see her doing that dance? She is literally doing a dance right now. Is that cool or what? Sorry. I just wanted to follow her a little bit. She was just doing a little discus dance. Very cool. Alright guys, that's about it. Happy fish keeping and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.